Well, greetings and welcome to Vanderbilt University School of Nursing's Informatics 101. I'm Patty Sengstack. I'm the director of the master's program in nursing informatics here at the School of Nursing. And I'm Alvin Jeffrey. I'm a fellow with the Department of Veterans Affairs and also on faculty here at the Vanderbilt School of Nursing. So today's topic, we're going to have some questions and conversation around data. So Alvin here is our data guru. So I'm going to ask him a few questions and we're going to have a little conversation about, about data in the world of informatics. So Alvin, when I hear you talk about informatics, you always start and you talk about data. So why is data so important in informatics? Uh, I think data is the foundation of informatics, in my opinion. And I could, I could be wrong about this, and you're welcome. Uh, can I do point counterpoint? Absolutely. Okay. Please feel free. <laughs> okay. So one of the models that we talk about in informatics or information science is this pyramid that shows data and information and knowledge and wisdom. So this idea that we have all of these data elements laying around in some ways, uh, you know, maybe it's a patient's temperature or uh, a laboratory value. Uh, in and of themselves, these data don't mean anything. A temperature of 101 degrees with no other information doesn't really mean anything. Right. But if you start putting that together with other elements, so maybe we also know that their uh, laboratory values indicate an infection, and we hear the patient describe uh, that they recently had a cut uh, or, or a wound, then we start to say, okay, we have enough data elements. And if we think about it and we analyze it, we start to move to this level of thinking, maybe we have a diagnosis that maybe we'd call sepsis, and that puts us at this information level. And so I really love that we can analyze all these different data elements and pieces and pull them together to tell a story that maybe then we take an action on. And you can do this at large levels too. It's not just the individual patient level. A research study, for example, collects lots of data, or a whole hospital in an electronic health record collects, I don't even know how much data, it's so much that all of that, there might be patterns or trends in there that we can pull information out of. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love data. <laughs> and I'm a Do bit you, of a nerd. <laughs> Do you wear a t-shirt that says, I heart data? That's what's underneath this one, oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so it's interesting, you know, the field of informatics is so, is, is so varied, just like, um, just like nursing itself has so many specialties. So when I think of informatics, I think of not only data, but how the data got there in the first place. Mm. So, you know, configuring the system so that it is uh, supportive of the nurse's workflow, so that getting the data in is, is easy to do and it's formatted so that it's easier to get the data out. And I think all those things lead to everything that you're talking about. So what are, what are some of the, the challenges to getting the data out and doing some of the things you're talking about. Yeah, if the data were clean, my job would be easy. <laughs> but what do you I, mean by clean, clean data? Clean, oh. Is, so, there, is there dirty data? All the data are dirty. Almost oh. all the data are dirty. Oh. Um, we say in the data science space, you spend roughly 80 to 90% of the time on your project cleaning the data and getting it ready for the analysis. The analysis is the easy part once the data are all formatted correctly. I remember when uh, uh, we went uh, at the uh, hospital I used to work at, we went mm -hmm. from a different one EHR vendor to another EHR vendor. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the super users that helped train the nurses. And they uh, told me they re refused to document in the flow sheets, in the, in the structured cells, because they just wanted to write progress notes for everything. This was before I was into data as much as I was. But what I was supposed to tell them is, well, this won't allow us to do analytics on it later because everybody's just typed free text and you can't aggregate that across the hospital. Now that I'm on the other side, I probably should have been a little more aggressive with these people to try to convince them to use the structured elements. Because uh, even just yesterday, I was looking at uh, data from an EHR vendor that was in our local database to try to pull out nurses notes. And it's in so many different tables and so many different areas. And this is one of the challenges I think we have and, and why I think people that are on the implementation side and the research side need to work together uh, to help build the story of, okay, if we can get the data, a little more structured, a little cleaner, a little better formatted at the front end, what's right. the 
impact we could get from that? What's the bang we could get for our buck? Because、yeah. to just say you have to do it this way, that doesn't appreciate and respect workflow and autonomy and all the other nuances happening in the clinical environment. So this conversation、uh, has to be with a lot of different stakeholders on on how that happens. It's hard to represent nursing care with a discrete. Uh, Drop-down list,、yeah. you know. So, so there's that balance that you have to get. So, you know, what data elements are so important that you know you're going to do some aggregation to to learn and improve, and where is there a place for the nurse to also document the patient's story? Yeah. So that that's important. So, tell me, when you began your nursing career,、um, did you ever use paper to chart? I did. I started did. on paper. I'm、you、not.、Did. I'm not that young, Patty. <laughs> I know I look it, but yes, I started on paper charts in the ICU with an eight-page flow sheet. Right.、Yeah. So remember how how it was to get data then. Yeah. So were, were you ever involved、yeah. in a project where you had to get the data out of flow sheets from patients? Oh my gosh! It was so painful for these quality、painful. improvement projects. Yes. yes. And now you can、right. just run a query, typically. But、uh, right. all, and you're so prone to error with these, you know, manual collection or missing a、yeah. chart or writing down the value wrong. I think we've exchanged probably one set of complications for another、right. set of complications,、right. which is usually what what happens.、Right. Um, Now, if I'm a nurse that works on a med surg unit or a,、um, ICU or you know an ambulatory clinic, and I know that I'm entering data on. Something, and I'm thinking, boy, it'd be great to pull that out and look at a trend over time. You know, what what should nurses know about getting access to the data that that lives somewhere on a server in a basement somewhere, <laughs> or offsite? We don't、Or、even know. On, It's right, in the cloud, right? And where's, right the, where's cloud. the cloud? Right. That is such a good question. And when I teach informatics to students, that is something I try to really embed or empower them with to be able to speak up and speak a language. So that someone that does know how to access the database can get that data out.、Mm-hmm. Most nurses aren't going to, you know, write the programming code to pull the data out of the databases. Although they they could learn that, and that's totally fine. And I I love、so、having you, that power. That's why we have you. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel so powerful, and I can just run a run a query. Most people aren't going to get there, but I do think it's an essential skill that they have a clinical problem that they can verbalize. I want to know, for example, what have、uh, what have been our Uh, adverse event rates with medications, for example, with、mm-hmm. with antibiotics. I, I don't, I'm making this up on the spot, but to be able to then go to IT or to the informatics researchers and say,、uh, "Here's my question. Here are the fields I want to pull from. I don't. You don't have to know what table it lives in in the database right, or right. anything like that. But just say these are the fields、uh, that I'm interested in, and here's the date ranges I want to know. Just to put some words with that, because I think. What's easy to fall into is just to say, "Well, this is a problem," and then you go about your day, and you don't tell that to anybody or communicate it in a way that that could actually get an answer. And so, I'm really passionate about having all nurses be able to speak to that. I, I totally agree, and I think you know, as nurses,、um, oftentimes you have passion about a certain area that you're dealing with, and you want that data, and you want to push for some change. And there's nothing more powerful than Having the data in front of you, I, I used to work at NIH, and I'd be in meetings with a lot of researchers, and they would always say, "In God we trust; all others bring data." <laughs> right. So,、um, you know, it's it is it speaks for itself. You know, when you bring a problem、um, to, forward for some improvement,、uh, having the data there to understand where you are, your baseline is so important. And I think nurses need to know that the data is in there, and they just need to ask for it. Yeah. And it's people like you and、uh, informatics nurses that can help get that data out. People just have to ask. I think we need to encourage we need to encourage our listeners to ask for the data if they're interested in it. And I think the other piece of that is to critically appraise the outputs from the analysis as well. I've worked in some institutions and done some analytics work where. People went ahead with the analysis, thinking that they were doing the right thing, and some of the variables were off a little bit because some of the units recorded things differently than、uh, you know off by a power of ten.、Uh, and I, I looked at it and I thought, this just doesn't look right. And any nurse could have picked up on that. You didn't have to have an analytics background. As long as you were at the table, you would know that these just didn't look right. And so I think that's another piece of of it、mm-hmm. is saying. 
to think back, okay, where did these data come from? Because I don't think, with what I know about patient care and nursing, mm -hmm. that the data should end up looking like that on the other end. One of the things I always tell my students is um, always, always question the data mm. in a nice way. Um, you just want to understand where that data came from because understanding its origin helps helps you to be able to speak to you know where it come where it came from how it got into the system in the first place and so that you know what you're presenting people want to feel comfortable when they're presenting the data for a you know a, a case they're trying to justify they want to understand where it came from and feel comfortable and confident that the data is correct so i always say question the data find out where it came from and so i think that's been you know that's been a helpful um, tid, tidbit or a piece of knowledge for them I like today. it. Um, do you want to talk to us about what is big data? Ooh. Or do you want to go there? You want I, to go to I think big data is great. Okay. You know, it's a buzzword that I think in some circles is still finally making its way in. And in other circles, it's kind of behind us in a way. It became a buzzword that yes. we're like, oh, do we want to keep using that word? Mm -hmm. uh, I think of Big data is really, you know, so you can have little data and maybe a spreadsheet uh -huh. uh, and you use your spreadsheet software to build some uh, pie charts or graphs or whatever. And, you know, each computer, you know, your home computer can't do as much as, uh, you know, a big uh, supercomputer, right? And so big data on your home computer could just be so much that your little computer at home can't analyze it. Mm -hmm. uh, now that data is coming in from so many different streams, so in healthcare, you know, we've got electronic health records and uh, phones and applications, and we've got our laboratory values and radiology, so much is happening, patient portals, uh, and then the whole internet of things outside of healthcare. Right. Uh, your home computer can't analyze all of these things or store all these things. It's and a little so, overwhelming, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And so what we've had to do over the past few years is think about now that we have so much data, we need different techniques, so not just our traditional statistical things, uh, but something we call machine learning. Some people will call it artificial intelligence. I like a term of data science that encompasses everything. And so depending on the size of the data, little data, medium data, big data, however it is, what's the important question? We probably have a technique out there that can help us get information out of that data. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's really exciting to me is when we were back on manual chart review, as you brought up, yeah. your sample sizes were so small. And so the amount of generalization you can make or the, the story you could tell that would apply across a lot of different patients was fairly limited. And so in our era of big data, I think we have a lot of potential to make bigger generalizations. Uh, yeah. So do you think that I'm thinking about competencies for nursing informatics uh, nurses, those specializing in the field, do you think we're at a point where um, there are tools that are easier to use that... Um, that can be taught to nurse informatics specialists that can take them out to the to the front lines and really help to make a difference. Have you seen that happening? Are, are they are there are the tools easier to use now? I think so. I think we've uh, really democratized the software is is a phrase I like to use. So it's available to everybody now. Things like R and Python are all free. They're open source in the sense that anybody that has internet access can download them and start using them. And then you have all of these uh, companies that do online learning to teach you how to use this. So wherever you are in the world and whatever your experience level is, and many of them are even free, uh, that you can just go on and start learning these things. And I think you know, one of the easiest things is just how do you get data out of a database? Because then once you have access right. to the database and you learn a few, uh, I call them a few verbs of code, uh, probably a dozen different words, and you can pull so much data out and uh, start doing some summary statistics. And if it really interests you, if you get the bug like I did, mm -hmm. then you go on and you learn these, uh, you know, more programming languages, uh, and and you build on top of. I, okay, now I have all the data. Now, how do I look for the information within it? And so that's definitely available. And I think it's something we're hoping to teach here at Vanderbilt. Actually, is even if we start maybe just to touch the tip of some of these machine learning algorithms, we're providing students with the resources that they could go on and learn more if they wanted to. That was the exact question I was about to ask you. You know, as as the, the newly redesigned program um, around, I know the two courses on uh, uh, data to information are, are built out, um, I'm assuming that you'll be helping us to include some of these um, new emerging competencies for our, our students. Absolutely. That's the plan. And I think when I started my PhD program, I was not interested in informatics. And, and so there may be others that maybe are thinking about informatics and not quite knowing where that's going to take them. Mm -hmm. 
But throughout my program, as I started taking statistics and biomedical informatics courses, I realized it really resonated with me, and it was a big eye-opener. And I hope that for the students that are in our program that take the data and information course, that there will be this latent excitement in them for doing this sort of work, that even though they didn't come in planning to do a little bit of programming, that they see how powerful that makes them, the questions that they could answer, and the change that they might be able to influence in the organizations. I don't know, that, that may be pie in the sky, but that's what I'm hopeful for. I, I would say that there has never been a stronger time for nurse informaticists to, to develop these skills. Mm. Yeah, because the, there's so much, again, uh, we're talking about data, there's so much data out there. Uh, and some people will say, you can think of it as, you know, this huge mound of data just laying dormant, waiting for information to surface A treasure it. trove. A tr yeah. A treasure trove. Absolutely. So, okay. well, I, that's, I think you've asked me everything I can answer <laughs> about data, uh, and I would love to do another segment oh, on you, machine learning you, in the future. You know you could talk about data for another two hours. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, I think uh, the questions that you ask remind me that it's, it's not just the analytics and the machine learning and all the nerdy stuff. It's also, how did the data get in? How were they structured? And then how are we putting them back out in a way that's going to be really meaningful? Actionable to is the word I would use. Okay, actionable. actionable. I like it. Yeah. So, all right. Well, thanks, Patty, for asking me uh, several of these questions. And thank you all for listening in. We're very excited to be engaging in this series. We hope you'll share this content with your colleagues, whether via social media or email. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, uh, please send those to us at the address below. Until next time. <laughs>